Now, you may have seen this video that went viral of a young woman trying to order a drink whilst battling a debilitating stammer. Uh, oh. She was at a drive through trying to order something. Oh, you just bless. feel such warmth towards her, though, don't mm. you? Yeah. You just think, God... But I she... bet this, she's got as many, many stories of where she hasn't. Hasn't, because I hasn't had warmth because yeah. we, still, we still know so little, don't we, really, about... Mm. And a lot of it, I think, comes from awkwardness, I yeah, suppose, exactly. because if you were the person on the other side, hopefully most people, you know, would, would want to help, but you're not always sure what mm. is the right thing yeah. to do, yeah. do yeah. to help. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and the last thing you want to do is blunder over the top of it and, you know... Because sometimes so... you don't know whether you should finish off the sentence... Yeah. When somebody's struggling. Yeah. Or do you just stand there? Yeah. Apparently you're not supposed to. Yeah. Apparently you just uh, just I wait. Yeah. Mm. I think as well, like with things like drive throughs for most of us that's easy. But you don't I've never ever thought of yeah. someone who, you know, might have a stammer or anything like that that actually it mm -hmm. makes it so much harder for them. Yeah. yeah. Imagine yeah. everyone's raging like behind you. Yeah. yeah. Like furious. He it really makes it worse. Yeah, isn't that the great... I mean, we talk a lot on the show about the, the kind of evils, if you like, of social media. Mm. And actually, this is where social media is such a force yeah. for yeah. good. Yeah. Because, you know, we had um, Lucy Edwards on, didn't we, a couple of weeks ago, who's blind, and she uses her TikTok account to say, look, you can this do is all what it's sorts like. of things. Yeah. You know? And this young lady as well, um, if, I think she was on... She was on the show, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah I think two or three years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so, you know, here she is, look. Yeah. The, um, the fact that, you know, it's out there now, because I mm. think when we were kids, if anybody had something, you know, that they were struggling with, there was nothing out there for them to identify with. Yeah. Whereas social media now, you can always... That's right, and it really something. makes you stop and think. Yeah. It was interesting, you know, when we did that, I think it was two or three years ago, the strap line was, do you worry about... You know, we saw that there. Yeah. Do you worry about your child's speech? I mean, as an adult, that's one thing, but there's real concern, particularly, you know, hopefully we're beginning to be post-pandemic in terms of what the impact has been on, you know, younger children's speech. Mm. I mean, there's some quite big stats here. Apparently, 1.5 million facing being left behind in their speaking understanding due to disruption caused by COVID. Uh, I, you know... Well, yeah, the disruption to their education, but also because they've seen well, yeah. people like this and you, yeah. you do read people's lips yeah. a lot yeah. when you're listening More than to half of parents concerned about their child starting school following uh, the lockdown in the spring and summer. Um, were you concerned with your kids? Yeah, you know what, it's so funny because when Parker was my first and so I had nothing to compare him mm. to and, I was, and I've always been one of those parents that, you know, you can't really compare your kids, they all yeah. do things at different times. And I remember I was at the doctor's with Parker for something else and Parker asked me for a snack. So I got him a snack out, gave it to him and then the doctor said to me, does he always um, communicate with you in that way? And I was like, I don't know what you mean. And he Good said, doctor, well... he just noticed that. I know, and he said, yeah. well, he asked you for a snack and you got it from him, you knew exactly what he wanted and he actually didn't use any words. Ah. And I was like, oh, yeah, I suppose he didn't. And I think you just, you know, we all get mm. to know our kids and sometimes yeah. they say things differently or whatever and we always kind of know what they want. And um, so we realised then he went for a few tests and he had glue ear, um, so he wasn't able to hear and... Um, then the teacher had noticed that he spent a lot of time lip reading. So, like you said, mm -hmm. so for kids these days that are being around a lot of people mm -hmm. with masks, they're unable to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so he was really behind on his speech. So luckily we were able to get him speech therapy and stuff. But with that came a lot of frustration, which mm. then obviously made so much more sense once we figured it out because he was frustrated because he was trying to communicate with yeah. us and we just couldn't yeah. understand what yeah. he was trying to tell us. Yeah. And it must be so frustrating and so annoying, and especially when when people don't understand yeah. um, and aren't aware of the situation. So mm. I think even with a kid and as a parent, mm. you don't really know what to do. So imagine as an adult, you know, if you don't figure those kind of things out and you meet strangers, it must be really and hard. it's that difficult thing, isn't it? Because we talk a lot on here about try not to compare because you can drive yourself mad working out, you know, how soon another kid crawled or... Spoke. We, we always say, oh, just mm. let them find the way. And I was very much that kind of mum. And it wasn't until recently we were looking at some old videos of the girls and um, and my youngest, you could see, because we've since discovered she had dyslexia, but you could see from the way she was doing these nursery rhymes, she was getting all her words mixed up the wrong when she was getting frustrated and I was just watching her and I was thinking, 
How did I not notice yeah. that? We probably thought it was cute. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, you think it's cute when little kids. A lot of really weird words, words like that. Like <laughs> yeah. Instead of popcorn, she'd always say cockporn. Yeah. And instead of McDonald's, she'd say duck monald. She'd always, and we we would, we'd encourage it almost. Yeah. You know, and cute. and um, but how often do we see do we say communications vital, communication yeah. vital, yeah. and yeah. that's essentially what it is. I mean, you know, remember when you did have those terrible problems yeah. with your your oh, voice? I, it I, really I, rocked you. Yeah. I mean, it's nothing like like that young lady is going through, but I lost my voice uh, for 18 months. I mean, I saw about eight different specialists and in the end, I just became very socially isolated. Mm. Um, I mean, I've got quite a croaky voice today as well, but I lost it completely. And so actually just going out was, it became impossible because yeah. you just sit at a table and by the time you've mustered up enough kind of energy to even get one sentence out. Everybody's moved on. Mm. Yeah. Um, because I everybody gets awkward. You were... They don't like silences. Yeah. And, and so in the end, I just sort of yeah. sit there like this. I think, oh, I've got so much to say, but I can't actually yeah. say it. I remember so quite a retreat. few times yeah. when we yeah. were going out, it'd be like, oh, well, what's the restaurant like? She'd have to think about how noisy yeah. it was and how yeah. much of a stress it was going to be. I know we're going to have to think of that because of my hearing. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> what God. are we like? But echoing that completely, Jane, this is Tina who's got in touch via Twitter. She says, five years ago, I caught the flu and resulted in my vocal cords being temporarily paralysed. I had no voice for oh. a year. Wow. I felt so isolated and lonely. Yeah. Exactly the words you used. Don't yeah. underestimate the power of speech mm -hmm. and a voice.